Hello and welcome, or welcome back to the Three Strands Pod. I hope you guys are feeling happy. I hope you guys are feeling strong. I hope you guys are feeling well. I hope you guys are doing fantastical. You look fantastical tonight. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out. Y'all look fantastic. You're the best crowd I've had all day. <laughs> this is the best looking audience I've seen all day. If there is one thing I am good at, it is giving recommendations. Now today, unfortunately, I do not have a song recommendation for you, but I have a book recommendation. This is to get your wisdom up. This book is called Invisible Women, Exposing Data Bias in a World Designed for Men. This is by Caroline Criado Perez. I definitely, definitely, definitely would recommend this book a hundred times. It is so fantastic. The book touches on six different ways that women face bias. The first is in daily life, the second is in the workplace, the third is in design, the fourth is going to the doctor, the fifth is in public life, and the sixth is when it goes wrong. Like I said, I don't want to ruin the book, but it is so fantastic. Like, I learned so, so, so much. Some of it I already knew, but some of it, it was completely new to me, and it's mind-blowing. The lengths at which society mainly men will go to to pretend that women do not exist and do not need to be accounted for in research, in design, in everyday life. It's crazy. But like I said, I'm recommending this book to you. Don't say I don't put you on because I just put you on. Okay. And with the recommendation out of the way, I think the time has come to make it do what it do. So without further ado. Oh, oh, oh. I said without further ado. Oh, oh. Oh, cue the intro. I'm 20 something years of age, and life surely ain't about handouts, so I lays my plan out. Hard work is living catered to an hardcore survival. Consider Jaws lesson from conception to arrival. Now that I'm here, my fears shall decrease. Learn about life, making my way to the east. From four square yard struggle up the G's on time. Your God hit me with yeah, that bro. So This episode does come with a trigger warning as I do mention murder, death rape and kidnap. This episode is all about my home, it's all about my heart, because home is where the heart is. Trinidad and Tobago's, that is my home. Obviously this episode is not a light-hearted one, it's not a happy, cheery episode, but this is something we have to talk about. We cannot pretend it's not happening just because it isn't something nice. A woman in Trinidad by the name of Andrea Barrett was kidnapped on January 29th, 2021 by a man named Joel Balkan after getting into a taxi with a co-worker. Apparently, Barrett and her co-worker were in the back seat of the taxi and there was a man in the front passenger seat. So it turns out that this obviously was not a real taxi and Barrett was kidnapped. And Barrett's father attempted to call her phone and then a man actually answered her phone and said, this is about money. If you don't pay the ransom, I will cut off your daughter's ears and send it to you. This is very gruesome. Very, very gruesome. On January 31st, Balcom was arrested at his home and made an attempt to escape, which resulted in him suffering some injuries which required him to be hospitalised. At the hospital, nurses later found him unresponsive and he was soon pronounced dead. Between the years of 2007 and 2017, Balcom was actually arrested and charged with 70 offences. Yes, seven, zero offences. These included multiple counts of rape, kidnapping, false imprisonment, larceny and robbery with aggravation. At the time of his death, 45 of his cases were pending. Barrett's kidnap case actually had another suspect, Andrew Morris, and he had been detained by police for questioning. And police officials said that he, quote, began to act violently. So he struggled with the police officers and was subdued twice and then later died. So both the suspects in Andrea Barrett's kidnap have ended up dead. 
Now, as unfortunate as this case is, this is not an isolated case. In Trinidad, there is a history of murders, especially in the first month of the year. And in 2021, for the first time in 15 years, the lowest murders were recorded in the first month of the year. In January 2009, 2010 and 2016, there were 49 murders in each of those years. In January 2017, there were 52 murders. In January 2018, there were 60 murders. And in January 2021, there were only 25 murders. Although the murders have gone down, like I said, this is not something to be celebrated because so many people have lost their lives which has obviously caused a lot of unrest, a lot of tension, a lot of stress and a lot of problems for people that are living in Trinidad and Tobago. As always, you guys know I had to go to the internet to go and see what people were saying. And one Twitter user shared a thread of a complete breakdown of everything that is happening in Trinidad and Tobago, which I will definitely put the link to in the description in case you guys want to read it. Cardi B tweeted, I feel like this year and last year we have seen so much disgusting crimes and evilness happening to this pandemic getting in people's head. I hate that defenceless people, especially women, are going through this evil shh. I pray for peace in the world. And one Twitter user responded to Cardi B's tweet and said, Don't you love it when a celebrity speaks on a national issue before our female president? I guess we'll only hear something from her if it was to hit home. I passed disgust and upset at this point. Another Twitter user tweeted, Cardi B1, TNT's president, Neil. And you guys are probably thinking, what? The female president of Trinidad and Tobago said nothing. Yes. Yes, that's right. The female president of Trinidad and Tobago has said nothing. Introducing Paula May Weeks, who is the first and current woman president of Trinidad and Tobago and has been since March 2018. She has not commented on the death of Barrett, but she posted a message for the International Day of Women and Girls in Science, which there is an episode out on this podcast if you haven't heard it, go check it out. And the progressive party leader, Nikolai Edwards, said, quote, The ball is now in her court. Her silence communicates that she does not seem to understand the pain that other women in this country endure on a daily basis. I personally don't understand how the first female president, who is currently the president, has not said anything about this issue. Like I said, the kidnap and death of Andrea Barrett is not an isolated case. This is not the first time this has happened. There are so, so, so many names of women who have been kidnapped, who have been killed, just different murders that have occurred in Trinidad and Tobago. And at the start of the year, the president has said not a word. Personally, I don't get it. But then again, I'm not the president. I guess she has her reasons. We just don't know what they are. Enter Dr. Keith Rowley, who is the Prime Minister of Trinidad. He was actually invited to the funeral of Barrett, but said, quote, I don't feel good, and said that he recognises that the nation is mourning the death of Barrett and other women. In 2017, after the death of Jamelia Dureveno, Rowley actually made a statement that social media users were calling tone deaf and victim blaming. Prepare yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves. He said, quote, Women need to take responsibility for avoiding domestic and gender-based violence by choosing their partners wisely. His words were, You called on the Prime Minister to do something about crime. I am not in your bedroom. I am not in your choice of men. Right now, Trinidad is looking a bit funkalicious. I don't have a clue. (laughs) I don't have a clue what is going on. The President has said nothing. And then when the Prime Minister does speak, he's victim-blaming. I mean, he didn't even want to go to the funeral because he said, I don't feel good. As a whole, it's not looking very great. That's all I can say, that right now, collectively, it is not looking very good for them. Enter the Minister of National Security, Stuart Young. He made an appeal to men to remember the God-given responsibility of protecting women and children and said it's, quote, a responsibility that I call upon all of you and myself to take seriously as we do protest the vulnerable in society, our women and our children. Stuart Young, the Minister of National Security, also said, I don't for a moment have to have an excuse as to why crime is existing and what is going on with respect to crime. At the end of the day, I am not responsible for crime. Now this bit confused me, 
because he is the minister of national security and he said that he is not responsible for crime now directly i get that because you're not sending people out onto the streets to commit the crimes but as the minister for national security i would believe that you are responsible for crime because you are securing the nation you are the nation's security how can you not be responsible it is entirely your job to make sure that the nation is secure is am i am i reading this wrong can somebody please correct me maybe i'm misunderstanding his role but how can you just brush off the fact that oh i'm not responsible for crime but your entire ro- your role is minister of national security and the nation is currently not secure so if not for crime within the nation that you are responsible then what are you responsible for i just don't, i personally feel like i may be misunderstanding his role i personally feel like i may i don't get it but you you let me know am i reading into this wrong is he i don't get it let me know on which side of the fence i'm supposed to stand but like i said before right now trinidad and tobago it's not it's not looking like it's making too much sense the prime minister doesn't want to speak about the murders of women that are happening on her soil the prime minister when he does speak he's victim blaming and he's talking about i am not in your choice of men you need to pick your men wisely i just don't like that in all areas of life it's like men are allowed to get away with everything and if women don't like it then they kind of need to be more like men they kind of need to suck it up and oh yeah well you need to pick a man that's only going to abuse you a little bit if you can stand this kind of abuse then yeah go for that why can't you just teach boys young men to not be abusive why can't you just teach them to not kidnap and not murder and not rape and not abuse women why can't we just do that as opposed to teaching women to just put up with it i don't like that that men are never ever ever held accountable for the nonsensical nonsense that they put women through and it's just like well women have to do better to pick men women have to do better to figure out which men are the psychopaths and which one are the murderers and which ones are the kidnappers and which ones are just crazy why can't you just not be crazy why can't you just not be a psycho why do i have to jump through all of these hoops and do all of this but you can be a kidnapper it's crazy i don't like that and like i said with all of this i just think it's absolutely sp- spinning to me how Trinidad and Tobago have a woman as a president and she has not said a word. If you guys do have any information on anything that either the president, the prime minister, the ministry of national security, anybody else with authority in Trinidad and Tobago has said or has done whatever anything relating to this topic, please feel free to let me know. Share any information that you find. I am very interested in hearing you guys' thoughts also. I will catch you guys in next week's episode. Until then, peace in the Middle East to you and your crew. What, what? Peace in the Middle East to you and your crew. Something years of age and life surely ain't about handouts. So I lays my plan out. Hard work is living catered to an hard core survival. Consider Jaws lesson from conception to arrival. Now that I'm here, my fear shall decrease. Learn about life, making my way to the east. From four square yard struggle up the G's on time. Your God hit me with that muscle.